Hello again, I'm Hannah, and this is the Atheo Pagan channel. Today, I'm joining you from my messy art studio to talk to you about Atheo Pagan principle number four, which is I am humble. Now, before we go into what humility means in the context of Atheo Paganism, it might be a good idea to talk about what humility is not. It is not having no self-worth or letting yourself be a doormat. Being humble is about recognizing you have limits, that you are not the center of all things, and that you are flawed. It's not about despair over those things. It's not about debasing yourself or feeling shame. You actually have to have a decent amount of self-respect and love to maintain a sense of humility. I know this from my own internal experience and I've seen it in others. If you feel an internal need to prove your worth in order to be loved by yourself or by others, you won't be in a state of mind to accept that your significance is just a part of existence, not a problem to be solved. You are a flawed, limited, tiny, insignificant speck in the cosmos and worthy of love and worthy of care. Your life doesn't mean much in the grand scheme of things, but that's just something that you have in common with every single organism that has ever existed. Humility is typically contrasted with pride in a culturally Christian context. And I think that that can be problematic. The term pride is used in different ways in our culture. Sometimes it means arrogance, which is the opposite of humility, uh, but it's often used in a context where a better opposite term would be shame. Shame and humility are not the same thing. When people push back against the way their identity, say as a gay person or a black person, has been historically weaponized against them, that kind of pride is a response to an expectation that they should feel shame for being who they are. It's a way of saying, we're just as good as everyone else, not we're better than everyone else. That would be arrogance. Now, if you are a white person like me, you may have grappled with the other side of that coin. White pride is poisonous. Does that mean that we need to feel white shame? White supremacy groups deliberately use slogans like, it's okay to be white, in order to imply that society is telling you to feel shame for existence. They are being deliberately misleading when they do that. What society, at least the part that's trying to fight racism, is asking is for you to have humility as a white person. When people bring up white privilege, it's not in order to make you feel shamed. When people want to look critically at history and politics through the lens of race, it's not to make you or your kids feel bad. It's really not about you as an individual at all. And I'm not just saying that to make soothing noises at you. I've walked this road and I'm walking it once I understood that it was humility and not shame that I needed to tap into, it was much easier for me to listen to the larger conversation about racial justice and understand the scope. Feeling humble about it isn't a punishment or you know, asking you to feel humble about it is not like a scold. It's literally one of the best ways that you can join that fight and be effective. Humility, feels good in a complex way, and it helps you be a better person, and it's not shame. So please don't feel ashamed no matter what the color of your skin is. Um, you exist as a person with a skin color, and that is okay. Um, white supremacy is not okay. I think that humility is similar to the concept of deep acceptance. We are who we are, and the world is what is it is. And before having any hope of changing that, we need to accept that. And in order to be able to accept that, we need to love ourselves enough to have the strength to basically heal the trauma of understanding how little we matter. And yes, this is traumatic. 
there's a hypothesis called depressive realism that the negative cognitive bias that people have in depression actually causes them to be more accurate when they judge how much control they have over the outcome of something. We have these incredible brains, but they are not objective. And some types of thinking are literally painful for us, even if they lead us to better truths. I actually think that this is a major reason why we invent religions, because objective reality is sometimes bleak enough to break our brains. And so we either uh, ignore it and distract ourselves with meaningless things until we die, or we make up stuff that reinforces our importance, or we make up coping mechanisms that lets us recover after peeking into the abyss. And I see my atheopagan practice as an example of the latter. I know that my brain is mechanistically capable of some pretty good rational thinking, but not without emotional baggage. So many things are overwhelming right now, and I'm not even talking about like cosmos scale, just like my neighborhood sometimes. And so I consciously pretend through ritual and deep play that I can speak and be heard by the cosmos and that if I love the world, it will love me back. And when I say pretend, I want you to understand that I'm not judging the objective reality of those statements. I am doubtful of both of those things, but I'm not actually in a position to judge. I say pretend because I approach it as a form of play, an exploration of the possibilities, and a humble reminder that I don't know that much about reality. So pretty much any big ideas I have about what it all means are speculation. All I know for sure is that the world is very, very big and full of surprises. And while I may be a meaningless speck of nothing, I will never be a bored one. Thank you and I will see you again in the next video.